Hello everyone, we're talking about sentence correction today and how we can become good at it. Let's get started. This is your overall plan, right? There are two broad regions that you want to work on, the method and the concepts. Now the method involves three different skills to build, but that happens in four steps and I'm going to take you through that in two minutes. The concepts are uh, wide, you have a lot of concepts that you can go through. I try to bring it down to let's say about 10 to 12 concepts that you really need to become good at. Of those as well, there's probably four that we need to absolutely master. And we'll get into all of those uh, in some time. For now, for this video, we're going to focus only on the method. So you can use your concepts, the ones you already know, in tandem and hopefully immediately see some improvement. Right, so the method in itself is four steps, right? First up, we want to just go through the first words of the options or sometimes the last words of the options. The focus here is on the options, right? We'll use that in tandem with the main sentence to be able to make some decisions. Let's see that in action. So this question, right? My focus goes immediately here. I'm looking at the first words of every option and trying to see how many forms exist. I think I have two broad forms for someone who's uh, very well aware of the concept here. Otherwise, three forms, right? So I have the restaurant company has recently added many new restaurants versus many new restaurants have been opened versus having recently added or recently adding, right? So which of these forms fits in best in the sentence? That's my main focus now. I'm not thinking about the rest of the sentence right now. I'm not thinking about the meaning or any other concept for now. I just want to make a decision about this. That eliminates a lot of confusion. So that when you're solving questions, you're not thinking about 10 different things, right? We don't want that. So first up, right at the get go, we've bottled it out to one decision to be made, not five anymore. Now here, if you know what the difference between active and passive voice is, how to spot them, and that active voice is always considered better than passive voice, then you know that C, D, and E are not the best forms here and will automatically be left with A and B, simply by using this one step. Now I'll be discussing active and passive voice in a different video, which would be basic grammar. So when we get to that, we'll uh, talk about that as well. For now, I have A and B, right? And my first step has done its job. Now I have only two options left. The second step, reading word for word or slow scan. So as it suggests, when the options are similarly written, I can just read them word for word and I'll see that there'll be some difference. That's why they're two different options. So as I read these two sentences, the restaurant company has recently added everything same, many new restaurants across the country and its sales have increased versus increased. And this is where I have to make a decision. Now this is tenses, right? I've got have increased versus increased, a perfect tense versus a simple past tense. And I want to decide which of these forms would fit in best. If you know the concept here, then you know that since we have a perfect tense here, we should be using perfect tense here as well. And that will give me A is the answer. Done. So if you see this bracket, we've got method and concepts working together. Your method is what helps you use concepts. So none of this can be ignored. You have to become good at all of this. Once you become good at all of this though, this is how easy sentence correction can be for you. And we can try this again with another question, but I'll quickly take you through the other two steps as well. Individual grammar check is when your options are different. For example, with this question, if A and B would completely differently written, right? Let's say the restaurant company had recently added was uh, included here instead of has recently added and a different form started here. Or if I, have, uh, if I had, although the mayor had said that the restaurant company should add. So have another form that's completely different. I won't be able to read word for word. I won't be able to do the slow scan there. That's why I have to individually check every sentence's grammar. This will happen for much tougher questions though. And if you're already at that level, the, adapt the adaptation process is usually not that difficult. So that's the third step. And finally, if an option survives all these three steps, then we have a meaning check. There has to be something wrong with four options, right? That's why the fifth option becomes right. If it's not grammar in any form, which I have checked through these three steps, easy check through this, then making sure that similar options are eliminated here. And if there are different options that are still possibly grammatically correct, that is eliminated here. So I've taken care of all the outliers in grammar here. Now there's only meaning left. And that's also the toughest part of sentence correction. So you don't want to bob yourself down to that yet. The time will come for that. Right? And we'll discuss that in another video as well. And these are the four steps. You'll need nothing post that. 
Let's see this in action with another question and you can pause the video here and take a minute to solve it and um, then I'll take you through the question as well. So go ahead, pause the video if you want. All right, so I hope you got the right answer. The right answer here would be D for Delhi and how we get to that is uh, obviously provide versus two providers right there, first words. And if you read the main sentence, Congress is debating a bill requiring certain employers to provide. That's prepositions or idioms. Again, we want to be good at that as well, another concept. Now, if I have uh, B and D as options, since they're simply similarly written, I can read them word for word, and I would find the differences here, as to versus that they can. And once again, I would know that D is the answer if we know about pronouns and the that form, which are again concepts that we have to deal with in advanced grammar, right? And we will talk about those as and when the time comes. For now, just reiterating the method, Look at the first words, last words to see differences. Use the concepts you know to make some eliminations. If you have similar options, read them word for word. Again, find differences. Use the concepts you know to make eliminations. This is faster. This reduces the number of decisions you have to make. And by default, that reduces the number of mistakes you can make. So there is a unanimous uh, agreement of sorts on this methodology within sentence correction among the um, at least the better teachers that I know. And I agree with this as well. Just follow this, four steps, right? First words, last words, scan similar options word for word. If you're still left with different options, then do the grammatical check. And if you're still left with options, then first, good. You're dealing at a good level within the paper. Congratulations on that. And then just check the meaning. Here, even if you get it wrong, that's fine. You'll probably get two questions in the paper that really make you come to the fourth step. And in that, if you get one wrong, that's still fine. You still got a nine on 11 essay, it's a good score. That's it. That's the methodology. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be discussing concepts in the next video. Thank you.